We all know that the Game Boy doesn't have an illuminated screen, so you've probably spent most of your time using one looking like this. Not too great. Luckily, you don't have to have the constant search for the nearest window anymore with the front light mod. But that begs the question, will it hold up to the same quality as the Game Boy Advance, or even the front lit model one? We're gonna have to find out in just a minute right here. First up, of course, you're gonna need the Game Boy, some liquid adhesive, the front light itself, and two screwdrivers, a Phillips and a Tri-Wing because this is a Nintendo product, and I've included a cloth that won't scratch the screen. Now we're going to take out the batteries on the back side and you'll locate the six screws on the rear side. There are two near the cartridge, two near each side, and two hidden under the battery cover. Once we've taken those out, you can gently pry open the Game Boy with your hands, as you'll see right here. It takes a little bit of effort because those battery terminals get a little stuck together and you should only have two battery terminals. Don't worry about it, those ones do stay in the case. Now we can use our Phillips screwdriver to remove the three screws on the back. Uh, I believe it's three. There might have been more at some point, I don't think so though. Then we're going to remove the ribbon at the top. Remember this orientation, it's kind of useful in the future. Uh, it does face up and fold back towards the PCB itself, not down. Now we can just simply lift up the PCB entirely. Mind to that speaker by the way, it gets a little stuck to the plastic. And with that off, we can see the screen that we're going to work on, as well as a couple of buttons that we don't really need. So we can go ahead and take those buttons out, take the membrane and all that off, and store them someplace safe. There's not too many buttons that you don't really need to worry about how they went in. They're keyed, so you can't put them in the wrong way. Now on the screen, you can see that there's a bit of foam here. This is actually too much width to be able to hold in both the front light and the screen at the same time, so we're going to have to manually peel that all off. It looks a little gross, but you won't see it. Now you can see I'm taking a screwdriver and gently prying around the edges. This is making me cringe a little bit myself. I wouldn't recommend using a flathead screwdriver. I would use something like a plastic instrument that's a lot nicer and easier to do. As you can see, I've fast forwarded. It took a long time to gently sort of pry around those edges, very gently. You don't want to scratch anything, and it'll just lift off eventually. The adhesive sort of gives out. And I've placed that on that cloth so it doesn't get scratched. Now you need to find the smooth side of the front light so that we can apply the adhesive to that side. With your side determined, we can go ahead and peel off the protective layer of that side and put on the adhesive as we saw earlier. Technically this part is optional, but it will improve the general appearance. Now we can take our screen and remember that orientation of the ribbon, it faces up away from the direction of the solderable wires on the LED front light and sort of slide that and manage to get it in place perfectly. You don't have to worry about it too much because, again, this stuff doesn't actually adhere until you put it into sunlight or some sort of UV source. Now holding them together, we can flip it on the front side, and you'll see that it hasn't really spread out completely. We're just going to apply a gentle amount of pressure and spread that around with our hands. And you may notice those air bubbles there. We don't want those at all, and we'll be moving those out in just a little bit. So I recommend taking your fingers and just gently pushing, not too hard, you don't want to damage the screen, and just moving those air bubbles out, as you can see right there. And that should take care of it. Now you can put this outside in direct sunlight for, I don't know, about an hour, two hours? Give or take. That's the amount of time you I gave it was two hours. Now you can peel off the protective layer and place this front down to make sure that it does still fit. Now we're going to have to take off two little chunks of the plastic here to fit the wires through the positive and negative leads. Um, otherwise, they'll just get crushed and you won't be able to make them fit out. As you'll see, I wrap the negative on the left side and the positive on the right side. We'll be connecting those up in just a little bit. But first, of course, before soldering, we gotta put those buttons back in because otherwise we wouldn't be able to use the Game Boy at all, now would we? Now, as I was mentioning, I just fold the wires over the side and plug in the screen connector and push that cable back down. And then I put in some screws for security's sake so that the PCB doesn't keep moving and make sure the buttons are firm. And then we just have to solder to these two terminals right here next to the headphone port. I'm not really sure how to describe them other than that. They are right next to the headphone port and the capacitor on the right side. So the top one is the positive. You do not have to include any resistors. Those are already in the screen itself.
Now when I first finished this, I thought that I had a decent product to show, but I didn't take any footage until the next day, and by that next day, the adhesive had actually spidered out like I mentioned, and I tried to redo the process only to get this. The front light was basically useless even compared to the original, however during the time in which the screen was perfect that previous day, I wasn't really impressed with the results. The contrast and general appearance was kind of washed out. If you look at the website, the image does show this, and I thought it was an issue of photography, but really the screen just takes on a bluish white glow that really reduces the image quality compared to the direct sunlight. Even compared to the frontlight SP as you'll see right here, this mod just doesn't really hold up. So personally I'm going to have to say pass on this one. Maybe at some point there'll be an affordable replacement backlit screen? Either way, I hope you found this somewhat useful, and I'll see you next time.